Hello and welcome to my reading journal setup. I am an avid reader and I love notebooks so I'm not really sure why I didn't already have a reading journal but regardless this year I was like we're making a reading journal. It's happening. So that's what we're doing in this video. I actually set this up on like December 30th so you're seeing it a lot further away from what it actually happened because I just I have a lot of content to put out in January um but I have been loving it so far I've been using it for almost a month and it's already gotten some good use so I'm excited to continue using it and I'm excited that I didn't waste all that time setting things up I don't set up a ton of spreads in this one because you know it's all book related and frankly I felt like I didn't really need them and also I don't really know what all I need yet and so I'm just kind of making it up as I go but having a great time this journal that I got is actually like I have no idea it's some random thing that I bought off of Amazon because I was trying to order it's called vividscribbles.com I don't know some random journal that I found off of Amazon because I um was in a pinch and I needed something quickly and so here we go it does have thick paper I haven't had any problems so far with bleed through which is great I was just looking through and making sure I haven't I'm not lying to you but no I haven't had any problems with bleed through and it has a ton of pages in it which I'm also really liking and I just thought it was a fun it's like neutral but like fun still so that's why I picked that. I will link down below in case you do just like the style of it. But other than that, it's just a pretty standard notebook. And yeah, let's set up my first ever reading journal. I can't believe we've waited this long. Let's go. Let's get into the setup. We're going to set up just a few different spreads. And all of these together took about an hour and a half, which I know because when I uploaded the footage, it said it was an hour and a half. So not too, too terrible. I did this just one morning over winter break and had a great time. So this journal has a key and an index that's included and you see that I went ahead and drew out things so that we wouldn't waste all your time. And also because I find it really helpful to be able to like draw things out and think through things. Some places you'll see I like completely change things. And so, you know, it gives you that opportunity to be able to change. On the first full spread, I am adding a little like quote page. This is obviously not necessary, but I like them and they make me happy. So here we are. On the right hand side, I'm doing a stack of books. These are some of my favorite books. They're all classics. So I went with like Little Women, um, Voyage to the Center, Journey. I think it's Journey to the Center of the Earth. I hope I didn't write that wrong. Um, and then Sherlock Holmes. And then one of them is King Arthur. And the other one I think is The Secret Garden. Um, and then on the left, I'm doing a quote. And just, you know, added a cup of coffee. Just some things to make it a little bit more fun. As we go through here, I am going to be using a few different things. So this fine liner I'm using is the Mild Liner Fine Liners. I have a set of them. I use them all the time. These markers that I have are from a brand called Primrosia. They are the same brand of my actual like regular bullet journal, not my reading journal, but my regular bullet journal. And I really, really like them. I got them with that just to test them out to see them. They're a brush tip on one side and the other side is a fine liner, which I really like. This set is called the Fauna set. There's also a Flora set and a couple other sets as well and I'm eager to try their other products because I've really been loving my bullet journal and these markers so far they're just really fun so I just picked like a couple of markers that are kind of really honestly like my favorite colors if you look really closely you might realize they're also like my brand colors <laughs> because they're my favorites and so that is you know how I came up with that I did erase the pencil before I colored them in because I didn't want the pencil to show through the books once I had them colored Once I had them colored in, I went back in with my mild liner and I added in the titles in pen and I just alternated between print and cursive. That's what we call that. Oh my gosh. If you could have seen my face just now, it would have been very comical. Um, it's around, I changed it to around the world in 80 days. That's what it said. 
by the way. Um, and so I just alternated between those to make them look a little bit different. And then I actually will add a little bit more in a second. But first, let's do the quote. For the quote, I'm still using the mild liners, but I'm also going to be using a brush pen. My favorite brush pen is the Tombo Fudinowski brush pens. They are really good. They're a little bit smaller, which I really appreciate because I have a really hard time with those like ginormous ones, you know, like the Tombos. I love a regular Tombow, but the brush pen part is just too big. So the quote I picked is the cover is not the book so open it up and take a look which is from mary poppins the new one i love this song that they do about the books and reading it's so cute and it just makes my heart happy and i love mary poppins in general i mean sorry emily blunt you've got nothing on julie andrews but still this quote now that i'm thinking about it is a little bit funny because as i'll show you in a little bit um <laughs> I had all these books that I had picked out at the beginning of the year for to like read this year and I picked them based solely on their covers because they looked like something I would like and y'all it was like four books there was three in a series and then one separate and I the series I got through like a chapter and I was like no it's not gonna work and then the other so I ended up returning two of them the other two ones I couldn't return and then the other one um I think I read two chapters and I was like nope it's not gonna work either like they were so not my vibe so you know it was kind of the reverse of you know they always say don't judge a book by its cover like you should read it even if it's not you know maybe what you think it's gonna be but this was the opposite it was just because you like it does not mean you're actually gonna like it so anyway next up I'm going to a reading tracker page I was originally not gonna do one of these pages even though I've always had one of these in my bullet journal since I started bullet journaling in 2020 and actually even before that like years before I had done kind of a similar bullet journal style thing and I had one of these I love but I just couldn't bring myself to leave it out so here we are. So this is a little bookshelf tracker spread. I did it a little bit differently this year. Typically, this is where I track all the books that I read um, and I will write their names on the spine and color them in. But this time we're just coloring them in and I'm going to write them somewhere else, which works because, you know, you really can't write the whole book name on the spine anyway. So it works out better. So I am planning to read 40 books this year that is my goal and so I put 40 books here on these shelves and my idea is one side being fiction and the other side being non-fiction I do read a lot of non-fiction so as you'll see um a couple of things in my reading journal are a little bit different than like most of the books you'll of reading journal videos you'll see and that's one of my big things is I do read a lot of non-fiction Next up is the spread I really wish I hadn't done. <laughs> um, fair warning, don't do this. It took the longest time and did not turn out the way I wanted to. But it was a great learning experience, okay? I, I would do it again, but I would change a lot of things. So what we're doing here is basically my vision was I wanted to make little tiny like library card looking things and put them in these brown pieces of craft paper like bullet journal paper that I could have and have one for each month so that I could have on one spread all of the books that I read for the month um it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to but you know what it's okay let's let's talk about it anyway so first of all I took this stamp that I got at Michael's I um, use the little stamp ink and I put the ink all over. I didn't actually do it all over. I wish I had done it all over. If I, you know, ne if, if I were to do this again, I would have stamped the whole page and then I would have put the title on a piece of paper on the top. There's my suggestion to you. That is not what I did. I did just the bottom half and then I started to put the craft paper pieces down. Originally I was going to do a big piece in the back and then a half piece in front and then I was like, no, that's not gonna work after I started laying them out. And so I did not 
end up doing that. I ended up cutting them in half. I made them all slightly different sizes, which just gives it a little bit of a whimsical look. You know, like it's vintage and we have, you know, things cut. So here we are cutting things and then I'm going to tape them down. Now all throughout my bullet journal or my everything, I'm using the Scotch double-sided tape, which I find to be the best thing for gluing things down in your bullet journal. However, in order to get the little library card things to slide into the little pouches, I had to like cut the pieces of tape so that it was just the very, very edges taped up and that was really not fun. So if I were to do this spread again, I would probably take up two full spreads and I would have made these a lot bigger so I don't have three across. Um, and I think that would have, yeah, that would have made me a lot happier because then I also had to cut these little library card things really, really small in order to make sure that I had room for them. Um, this was a free printout that I actually found on the internet. I literally just Googled free printable library card and found this. Um, so there were like four different styles and so I just cut them up into the correct size. It did end up working out. It just was a lot messier and difficult than I wanted it to be. That being said, I do like the idea of having all of like the books you've read on one spread so you can kind of see them at a glance and so I like that idea. The other problem I had with this was that the library cards were so small that I still had the problem of you can't write the whole title. So I'm, I'm exploring some other options for how I am tracking all of the books that I'm reading over the year. So that's my that's my hey look at this but don't do it advice to you. After what seemed like forever, I finally got all these pieces of paper onto the page and I put the month names on all of the pages so that I know which ones are which. And then I'm going to write the title up at the top and then we will be done with this page. Hallelujah. Now here's where I did have a little bit of bleed through from the ink that spot had just like a lot of ink on it, but it's okay because we're going to cover it up. So if you are using ink and like stamping in your, in your bullet journal, just be aware, don't get too much ink because you can see it's just in that one spot from the one press. So, you know, there we are. Here's what all those library cards look like. I am cutting those out because I'm going to use them on this next spread, which is going to be a lot easier than the last one. And this is going to be a to be read and a um, coming soon list. So I'm just cutting out a couple of these and trying to decide, you know, where I want to put them. And on that left side, we're going to put a to be read. I'm actually going to change the title, which you'll see in a little bit later. And we're going to call it a maybe next. I have been watching a lot of Erin Smith's bullet journal videos and reading journal videos, and that's what she calls it. And I really liked that. It kind of takes the pressure out of the whole like you must read these books i have two different ones because i do again read a lot of fiction and non-fiction and so this way i have fiction on one side and non-fiction on the other if you're interested in what i'm wanting to read i stick around till the end because i will fill it out on camera so you can see kind of my ideas next up i got some green paper because it was just looking a little bit too too drab. I needed some color. I'm not someone who's like can do the neutrals on neutrals on neutrals. And so this is just green 
paper from Michaels from a pack of colorful paper and I'm gonna put it covering most of the page on the right side which is gonna be a coming soon page a lot of the reading journal videos I saw had a coming soon page and I was like that's weird because I don't usually keep up with like books coming out like I'm not that worried about it but there were so many books that like authors that I really like I have just a couple authors that I really like enough to like follow them and like all of them have books coming out the first half of this year and so when I saw that I got so excited and so that's why we have this spread normally I wouldn't care I'm not that up on the things but this year we're in luck all of my favorite authors have books coming out including one who has not released a book in years and I am so excited to read her next one I added some green to the left hand page so that it would just kind of balance out the right hand because otherwise it just it just looked a little weird and I'm writing the title here with partially in cursive and partially in print which is kind of how I have the whole journal set up and so we've got maybe next on one side and then coming soon on the other. Now, since my things I wanted to read did not pan out the way that I wanted them to, I would love some suggestions of books that you have loved, whether fiction or nonfiction, because I do read both. Um, specifically, I am a historical fiction gal, and so if you have any suggestions on that front, let me know. Right now, I'm adding just a little box around because it needed something more, and if you ever find that your page needs just a little something more, Adding a box around the edge makes like all of the difference in the world. I'm actually using just a Sharpie pen for this and it worked totally fine. Not even a Sharpie pen, it's just a Sharpie. It did not bleed through at all, um, worked really well and it was great. It's like a metallic gold situation. So there we are. Part of my book journal journey is that I want to actually like review and kind of summarize the books that I read. This is one of the big reasons I wanted to do the journal because I have been wanting to do this in a way to help me like summarize what I read, really understand it more. There's a lot of studies that say basically if you interact with the text and summarize it and have key takeaways and stuff like that, it really helps you to learn the things. So I decided to have a nonfiction and a fiction recap. So this is basically the format that I'm going to use for my like reviews, summarizations, that kind of stuff. I don't use all of these every single time, but it's just kind of an idea so that I am able to keep on top of, you know, what I want to do. And I'm not just sitting there staring at a blank page being like, yeah, I read a book, but I have kind of something to jump off of. So on the left hand side, I have my nonfiction and so I just have a little bit of information like the title, the author, the dates that I read it, the rating that I'm giving it. Um, I have a box for life changing. And so if it's like life changing, that's we, we check the box. Um, and then it, I want to do like quotes, details, notes, my thoughts, and then key takeaways. And that key takeaways is the biggest thing to me because I read a lot of books and so I want to be able to actually like get something out of each of the books that I read and so having a key takeaways just really helps to make sure that you are taking something away and actually doing something about it. Then on the right hand side I have the fiction. This is fairly similar but much less just you know title, author, date that I finished it, the rating, and then I've been doing basically like details and then um, my thoughts about them. And if I have a quote that I like, I'll put it in there. But if I don't, which I usually don't because I don't really like annotate my fiction books, I've thought about it. Maybe it'll be something we do one day. But so far, I haven't been like annotating my fiction books. So I don't have like quotes to add in there. Then I added this little craft paper with the rating system on there. It's not anything super sophisticated. It's just something to make sure I stay consistent and taped that in to make it a little bit more interesting and 
I think that's all we do here on this page. All right, on the next page is gonna be a Bible tracker. I have been working really hard on reading more of my Bible, and so I like to keep track of that. And I am cheating and doing this the easy way. And by that, I mean, I am going to my Bible tracker that I created that I have up on Teachers Pay Teachers in my store, Becca's Bible class, which is where I sell um, like Sunday school lessons, that kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna print them out. And when I do that, this is what they look like. So I have, you can see there's a version with the names and a version without the names. And so you can have kids, the idea, kids can write in the names or you can just have them color in them once they finish, or you can use the blank ones. I have used the blank ones before for just a regular reading chap tracker. So if that's something you need, you can do that. I will link these down below. They're not expensive. Um, and it's great because all you had to do was cut them out, tape them down, and we're ready to go. I guess that was a bit of a misnomer because I did add a title and then I do color in the like shelving parts, but you know, you didn't have to, so it's still pretty easy. Now, this is a spread I have not seen anyone else do, even though I've watched quite a few reading journal videos. I find that most of the people in these read either fantasy or they read like those psychological thrillers or they read like romance. And I have nothing against any of those things. However, they're not quite my vibe. I'm much more into classics and then historical fiction is really really my jam if we're being honest um that's what i read 90 percent of the time so i thought it would be fun to have a book timeline since i'm reading historical fiction and so i can kind of see like where all my books fell in the year and you know like what the time is so this is a really simple one for now it hopefully will be very busy and filled out by the time the year is over but for now it's just basically like a line um and then i'm gonna add a couple of things to symbolize like the passage of time so i am going to pull out my phone and pull out my hp sprocket this is a little tiny printer it prints on little photo paper and i am in love with it i got it specifically for my reading journal because i wanted to be able to print out book covers but i have used it a surprising amount to be honest so I picked out four photos that just kind of represent different ages to me and that's what I am printing out here and I'm just gonna cut them and add them to my timeline the first one is like ancient Greece and so that to me is you know ancient Greece ancient Rome I read a lot of those kind of things the next one is more like Victorian era so like 1850s the next one's World War II I've been reading a lot of World War II books and then the last one's a picture of me <laughs> um and so that represents like the modern era so I'm gonna put these like across the page to just kind of give me a little bit of time and then as I read things I've been adding them and adding like the date ish because obviously most of these books don't take place you know all at one time some of them take place over years or even decades but I you know pick a time that to me represents that book and then I add it in there I did write a little bit of guides but yeah so far I've read a book in about like 1919 I've read a World War II book and a 1930s book and two that I tried from ancient Rome that were not 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 doing it for me so I, I skipped those now really quickly just in case you you know needed a little bit of inspiration we're gonna fill out my maybe next and coming soon so here on my coming soon I have a couple of books um, diva by Daisy Goodwin actually has now been released since I did this 
I'm so excited for this one because it's about Maria Callas, who is a famous opera singer, and that is my jam. I'm also excited for the next one, which is Maria, which is a novel about Maria von Trapp. Yes, like The Sound of Music, but the real story, I assume, by Michelle Moran. She hasn't posted a book in years, so I'm so excited. And then The House on Biscayne Bay, is that right? By Chanel Clayton. She has released a book like every year for the past few years, which I really appreciate, can I just say. Next up, I'm filling out my maybe next, and I'm starting with a picture of these books that I purchased the other day. Um, so the Feel Good Productivity, I have not read yet. Um, Psychology of Money, I have read. It was really good. Um, all of the other ones on the fiction side, except for I Was Anastasia, I would not recommend just saying then i'm adding a couple other ones so how to talk to anyone platform the practice it's kind of a variety of different books based on um like business entrepreneurship kind of things castle doors by daphne de Bourier. persuasive copy because copy is something i'm trying to get a lot better at that's like writing for sales breakthrough copy more words that sell copywriter's handbook and that was a pretty good start so you know there's more but that's what we started with i hope you enjoyed the video here is a little flip through and you can click the link here on the screen to check out some of the bullet journal videos i have if you like this content i'll see you in the next one bye